Thank you so much, why the Lord bless you. Beautiful auditorium. 
I've been with you in the former place. That's why I'm not a first timer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for Mama and thank God for Pastor Obo. Thank God for every one of you. Um, and I thank God for my brother whom we are just meeting for the first time, Pastor Legend. I thank God for your life. You are Team and the choir. I want you to know that I've already been blessed. I just wish as if I should just say the grace now. You can all go. Praise God. But I'm so sure that God has packaged this program to just bless you tremendously. That you are coming here and never. Never to be the same again. Yeah. Never to be the same again. Say, I shall never be the same again after this meeting in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to understand, please, it's not an empty statement, it's the truth I'm saying to you. You can't come into His presence and live the same way. The Bible says that in His presence there is liberty, in His presence there is fullness of joy. Please understand me. Understand me. Never the same again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to move around, love somebody this morning. You see, it's not enough if we don't even have the time to fellowship with ourselves. Please give me one handshake to somebody. Welcome somebody to God's presence. Are you hearing me? 
We say it, but we don't know the meaning. All about the messages of Jesus. As he went preaching the gospel, the Bible says that he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. A man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In John, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 73, it says that seek ye first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The kingdom of God. So we'll see that the emphasis of the gospel has always been on the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. And we know this in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We see emphasis on the kingdom of God. And Matthew there much emphasis on the kingdom of heaven. So we go into the truth, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is saying the same thing. But what is the kingdom of God? If we are going to enjoy the blessings of the kingdom, we've got to know what is the kingdom all about. Why the emphasis on the kingdom? Now I want you to understand it. Which is very, very important that you are not in this world for the form of it. And you are not in Christ for the form of it. You are not being called in to just be an onlooker. Our creation is not for the form of it. It's a God of purpose. It's a God of purpose. And God said, let us make man. He has something in mind. Not just for creating being, but for a purpose. And let us make man. And they said, let us make man in our own image. And the Bible says that in the image of God, created even both men and women. And the Bible says, and God chapter 1 verse 28 and God bless them and God said in the blessing is a be fruitful not just blessing blessing on you for the fall of it it said be fruitful when you see the blessing you see fruitfulness Amen. hallelujah when you see the blessing you see fruitfulness when you see the uh, cause of the life you see a fruitfulness are you hearing me? Now listen, you've got to have a, a proper understanding of your person because God wants a change. There must be a change. There must be a change in your life, in your attitude, in your words. There must be a change in your marriage, in your job, your business because we are different people on this earth. I am not an ordinary person. You are not an ordinary person because of Jesus. We have been living an ordinary life, but we have not been called into an ordinary life. We have been called into a super ordinary life. Are you still here with me? Yes. Are you still here with me? Yes. Are you ready for a change? Yes. A great change. 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 His likeness on earth. One of the stones that reflect his person. If my people that are called by my name, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, say, My people that are called by my name, we are the people of God. We are his replica on earth. That is why of the new creation. That was why Jesus Christ came. He came to bring us back into the former position. Second Corinthians 5 17 says that therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, all things have become new. Hallelujah! And we continue to say that God was in Christ Jesus, you know, reconciling man unto him back unto himself. And this is the ministry that he has given to us that ministry of reconciliation that we should go and reconcile all men back unto him. 
morning. Are you understanding why you have been called? And everybody is just there and just sitting there and watching. We are sitting out there and the devil is having his way. It's time we chase him out of our marriages. It's time we chase him out of the church. It's time we chase him out of our lives. It's time we chase him out of our finances. It's time we have dominion. He has come us to have dominion. I see the church. Those supposed to dominate, they are being dominated. Fear is dominating them. Worry and anxiety is dominating them. Paradise is dominating them. Lack is dominating them. Sickness and diseases is dominating them. Hallelujah! Amen. It's time for a change. It's time for a change. I see. Many believers, prayers of many believers does not even reflect their person. We pray about witches and wizards, let them die. We pray about enemies, let them die. All the time we think about the enemies and we, we think that it's the enemy that have not really allowed me. That's a lie! You are who you are by your understanding. He, he is my everything. He is my all. Christ is my everything. Both great and small. He said his life for me. Make everything new. He is my everything, everything. And what about you? He is my everything. He is my all. Christ is my everything. Both great and small. He gave his life for me. Make everything new. He is my everything. Everything. And what Listen, it's not about the devil, it's not about the enemy, it's all about you. It's not even about God. You've got to understand this. Because God has done everything he needs to do in Christ Jesus. It's about you. The devil has no new trick. The devil has been using the same trick over mankind year in, year out. And that trick, which has been his power, is ignorance. The power of a devil is in ignorance. When you don't know, you are in the dark. Until you know, you cannot change. Until you know, you can't move forward. Until you know, you can't possess your possession. Praise God. I was born in secular. It was a difficult thing to believe. I thought I just couldn't believe it. But I just know. I was sounds blind. But now I can see. I had another incurable disease. A psychosis above my dear Christ. And this disease, no definitely, whether the true African juju on me, and the thing was moving all over my body. It's eating into my system, came from this place and moved to the other side above my dear Christ. In the University College Hospital, it did operation on me, did research on me, they noticed that the thing was moving all over my system. 
and later it moved into my inner. And they said, my consultant then, Mr. Tinek, said, really the people escape death in this. We have tried to train that disease, but it never stopped. It's moving all over. Moved later into my private part. They said it can move to your heart, it can move to your brain, anywhere. And that would be the that would be, be the end. And I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Gave my life to Jesus Christ in 1978. And I gave my life to Jesus Christ after three years, 1981, I was at the climax of my health. It was like everybody gave up on me. I can't go into detail. But what I want to tell you, that 1981, the story changed. The story changed. Praise God. I want you to understand the power that is in the Word of God. Heaven and the earth shall pass away, but the Word of God shall not pass away and fulfill. Nobody can tell me. Well, the struggle continues. 
your struggle will continue. You're on your own. God is a spirit. We can see him. Are you hearing me? Is God here this morning? Is God here this morning? Yes. Are you sure he's here? Yes. Huh? Is God in your life? Is God in your home? Hallelujah. Is God everywhere you are? Then, why do you think you have to come to church before I can hear you? Are you hearing me? It's everywhere. In your heart. It's there. Everywhere you go, God is. When we come to church, which is very, very important for us, it's a time in which the church has come into the sanctuary because we are the church. We are the household of God. And when we come, the anointing becomes greater. It's not a matter of me coming to pray for the sick. And all of you are watching. Let me see whether it's going to work. Oh, will that thing work? Oh, this man, does he have the anointing? No, you are missing it. It's the church praying him for the sick together. We are all working together to see him walk, to see the man walk, to see the blind see. You are not here as spectator. We are participating together for his glory. Yeah. And listen to me, when the church wakes up, we are going to see the mighty move of the Spirit of God like never before in our world. It's waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. Amen. We are to take nations for Jesus. We are to take this America for Jesus. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? You are not ordinary people. The people of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is talking of the reign and the rule of God. It's reign and it's rule. And Jesus Christ, the doctor would say, say, the kingdom of God is within you. The rule of God. He wants to rule. I tell people, if I am the light, as the word of God says that you are the light of the world, light dominates. <laughs> oh, hear me very well. When I come into this place as a light, if there is darkness here, psh, everybody that could not see will begin to see. They will begin to find direction. I am a life changer. I am an agent of change. Yes. Are you hearing me? Amen. Now listen to me. That is who you are. If somebody has opportunity of meeting me, he has my blessing. Amen. If somebody has opportunity of shaking my hand, his life can never be the same again. Amen. Listen to me. That is the same thing with you. I am somebody. You are somebody. In Nigeria, you're brother, they call some people, some people, they, they call some people, they say, you don't wake up to see them. You don't wake up to meet them. Yes, when you wake up to meet them or you see them, your day is born. <laughs> you say, yeah, Jimmy and yeah, Chico. You don't wake up to meet them, you don't wake up to see them. Are you hearing me? But we are people. When, when they wake up to meet, Amen. when they wake up to see, oh, 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 oh they are speaking. Yes. It is by the virtue of who I am. Amen. I am Jesus. Amen. I am Jesus. You are Jesus. You know when I say something like that, I say, hey, hey. <laughs> first Jesus coming. <laughs> but that is what Jesus Christ has in mind. What he has in mind is to create is person. That's why I say, since this side shall follow them that believe. In my name, it is by his name. By his name. By his name. By his name. When he finished, he came and showed up to the 
disciples. And Bible says, he prayed this prayer, you know, said, receive the Spirit. As the Father sent, so send unto you. It's a greater work than I do. You shall do also. Because I go to my Father. This morning, or this afternoon, I want you to permit the Holy Spirit like never before. Let the Holy Spirit flow. Let it have its way. We are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit and many in the church have loved the Holy Spirit out of their life. And they wonder why they are not experiencing God. Why are they not experiencing His blessing? Jesus Christ laid their crosses on the Holy Spirit taking over after He has slept. He told the disciples, I am going. He said, but when I go, I will not leave you comforted. Another translation said, I will not leave you as an offer. He said, I will send the comforter, the Holy Spirit. He said, I will pray the Father to send the Holy Spirit. And it shall be with you. And it shall be in you. Why the Holy Spirit? Because when he is in us, he will duplicate Jesus in our lives. I read the story. In the city during the Second World War, the statue in this heart of town, they made the statue of Jesus with his hands stretching. And they put an inscription under it Come unto me, all ye that labor in a heavenly name, and I will give you rest. Amen. That's what Jesus Christ is saying. Rest. But during the Second World War, Bob went into that city and the two hands, the two stretched hands of Jesus' statue was broken. And so they had to come tea after the World War. What do we do about the broken hands of the statue of Jesus? Should we replace it? Or we remove the statue entirely? Then they came to the conclusion no, let's leave the Hand, the broken hands, like that. Let it be that Jesus says, hand has been broken. But let's change the inscription. And they say, we will change the inscription. We are both going to put in the scripture. You can be the hands for Jesus. Amen. You can be the hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. And that is what he has called us into. After he left, he said, Go ye! Into the world and make disciples of all nations. We have been called to go and spread the gospel. The good news that Jesus Christ is alive. If you cannot see him, you can see. I am Sir this representative. I am his ambassador. I am standing for him. Come. And you go and do what he has you to do. If you meet the sick in that house, pray for them. Be healed. If you meet the oppressed, the depressed, pray for them. Go. I tell you something. Sickness, power, and the mention of the name of Jesus. That name is highly exalted above all other names. At that mention of the name of Jesus, every name of power, or peace in heaven, or peace on earth, or people in the earth, whatever the case may be, your life. He shall take them away. Amen. Sickness shall go. Amen. Disease shall go. Weariness shall go. Amen. Oppression shall go. Amen. Whatever the situation is, it shall change it. 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 Lastly, as Paul on Deuteronomy chapter 28, he says that now it shall come to pass. If you did it, then they obey the voice of the Lord your God. That is what he said. If you obey his word, it's not just praying and claiming the blessing, but you've got to learn to obey his word and say that to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Because you obey. Because you obey. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. There shall be peace in your life. There shall be peace in your home. There shall be blessing and prosperity in your life. In everywhere you go, the blessing shall be saved. The blessing shall be saved.
shall be saved. Praise the Lord. But he's talking of you learning to obey what he has said. And he says that, he said in verse 3, Blessed shall thou you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your hand, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall you shall be your basket and your living God. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out, she shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command a blessing on you to your storehouses and in all you set your hand and, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you and holy people to himself. Amen. Hallelujah. Just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his way, then all these people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessings beyond measure. Amen. Say blessings beyond measure. Amen. Say blessings beyond measure. Amen. Say I receive it now. Amen. Say I receive it now. Amen. Say I receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Oh my shaka taya barabobo shakitoria. Lika taya barababa shada tada. Lika taya barabobo. Make taya barababa. They continue to say the Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land at the season, and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend unto many nations, but you shall not borrow, and the Lord will make you the end and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. Hallelujah. Keeping his word. Makes his blessings available to you. The blessing, this is spiritual. Blessing is spiritual. The manifestation of it will be seen in the physical. Blessing is spiritual. The word of God is what he has given to us to walk in. We cannot see God, but we can see his word. When you take his word and you meditate on his word and you speak his word upon your life, you will see the manifestation of the blessing. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says that this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you should meditate in it day and night and observe to do according to all that is written therein. He said, Then that shall make your way prosper, and then thou shalt have good success. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Say, Father. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus, I connect. I connect together with your blessing this morning. In your word. In the name of Jesus, I speak a change to my life. Yeah. 
Jesus. Yeah. 